Let's talk a little bit about Brendan Schwab. Brendan Schwab losing his lawsuit to Unique. Let's go from that and then we'll go to the car crash. So recently it's been announced that Brendan Schwab unfortunately lost his case against Unique. The case around defamation, the case which was dumb in the first place. I don't know why he did it. I don't know why he decided to take Unique to court. He should have just took the L on the chin when it came to him being exposed for allegedly cheating on his wife, but he couldn't handle it. So he decided to take, take Unique to court. He silenced him for a short period of time. They took down his main channel. Unique then decided to fucking open up another channel and just kept doing the same thing. So they didn't even shut him up. Even if, if anything, they made the situation worse because they basically made Unique a bigger person. Um, it brought more attention to Brendan and the Bapaverse. It made all these big YouTubers like Moist Critical and shit do videos on fucking Brendan and it just turned into a fucking shit show. So all in all, terrible situation. So I'm going to play Podcast Cringe's video. Big up Podcast Cringe, one of my favorite channels out there doing some of the comedy community commentary. And he did a really good analysis on what happened. And he might have played an interesting role in making sure that Unique won this case because there was a point where Unique might have lost because of his laziness and because he wasn't taking the fucking thing seriously. But according to the word on the street, Podcast Cringe was a former lawyer himself and he may or may not have been responsible for giving Unique some pointers in terms of making sure he, he achieved the victory that he achieved. So let's play Podcast Cringe's video and I'll give you a bit of my analysis in between less flipping go i mean can, can you sue people i don't have you tried doing any of that no i mean we got we have, we have a lawsuit with a guy who made like three thousand videos again if you're gonna critique stand up or my fight picks or my, whatever my football picks all good that's what the internet's for now if you're gonna go out there in uh defamation like you know whatever brendan hits his kids or beats his wife oh. well, then you got my attention i love the term if you're gonna go out there in defamation you can't even speak. You're going to go out there in defamation. What does that mean? If you're going to go out there in defamation, if you're going to go out there and say defamatory things, if you're going to go out there and defame me, if you're going to go out there in defamation. <laughs> Come after you. How does this guy have two degrees? How? Oh, Yeah, that, that game I don't play. And the guy's suffering from that. And the guy's suffering from that. But the defamation, now you got my attention. You start doing this evil stuff, I'm going to come for you, man. That's what's happening. Yeah. However, as we all predicted, Brendan would ultimately fail in his pursuit to bully and intimidate Kyle, resulting in a summary judgment against him, ending his two-year lawsuit. United... Two-year lawsuit. I forgot it was that long. Two years. God damn it, man. Can you imagine how much money this guy has spent on lawyers? But it also goes to... It's, it's one of two things when it comes to Brendan. Either... He makes way more money than we know he does. No, he makes way more. Either he makes way more money than we think he does. Either he has more money than we think he does. Or maybe he has some lawyers in his family that are probably working pro bono or something. Because I can't imagine betting on yourself, not having the showtime check, and being able to spend that, mu that amount of money on lawyers. Because some people are hypothesizing, yeah, exactly, um, thingy, podcastables put it. Some people are hypothesizing that it could be close to half a million dollars he spent on lawyers. That is wild, bro. Wild, especially for like a, a what? I won't say mid-level, but a fairly known podcaster. He's not that well known, right? Um, he's not doing comedy anymore. Like most of his money is coming from, you'd imagine, content, podcasting, ads, to spend a half a million dollars over two years state's district judge mary mcelroy concluded weighing the factors together with the instant circumstances the court concludes that mr swindell's use of the copyrighted material is fair three of uh. the four statutory factors weigh in mr swindell's favor and mr swindell's use of the copyrighted material serves as a public benefit because Mr. Swindell's use of the copyrighted material is fair, the plaintiff's motion for summary judgment is denied Jesus and Christ. the defendant's motion for summary judgment is granted. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> and so how did all of this start? Can you, 
can you believe that one video is the reason why Brendan had to spend half a million dollars on flipping lawyers? That one video of him, like an idiot, handing some girl a note while he's on fucking live stream. What, like, honestly, he's got either the worst luck or he's just incredibly redacted, incredibly regarded, incredibly like you know low double low double digit iq that he would try to hook up with some girl live on stream or something it's like brother couldn't you wait until the show was over and the cameras were turned off couldn't you wait until she was nearer the bar and not sitting right next to the stage like come on bro he's so dumb like it's so this such an avoidable issue so easily avoidable these videos had an approximate run time. Or, what I always thought, this is, this is one, my one thing I don't I get. Why was BGL there? BGL was there during that Super Bowl thing. And there was that famous image or video of BGL trying to hand Brendan a glass of whiskey through the bushes, right? There was a plant pot there and BGL was trying to not be obvious and hand off, you know, Brendan a, a drink while he was on air. If that's the case, why didn't BGL go and approach the girl and give the girl Brendan's number. If he's good enough to hand you a drink through some fucking flower pots, why can't BGL go give that girl a paper with your note on there written in crayon? Do you like me? Yes or no? Like, come on, man. ...of four to eight minutes and contained roughly 50% commentary and 50% clips from the Fighter and the Kid podcast. Specifically, the episodes were 725, 726, 729 and 740, all from September and October of 2021 with durations well over an hour. Now, due to YouTube's three strikes rule regarding copyright notices, Brendan's DMCA takedown notices resulted in YouTube completely deleting Kyle's channel, which had approximately 20,000 subscribers at the time. That had to hurt, innit? That had to hurt. I couldn't imagine my whole channel just, be, just delete. Like, God damn, that's gonna hurt. God damn it. But then he won in the end, right? It's a big up fucking unique in the end. Big up unique. But this is where it gets interesting and a little bit technical, so I'll do my very best to explain. In the United States, you don't get an automatic right to copyright of your work. You actually have to register it. In some other countries, if you take a photo or a video of something, you automatically have copyright over it as soon as it comes into existence. I think that's the case in the UK. I think in the UK, if you record something, it's your copyright. I think that's why... In the UK, when people record videos of fights or stuff that happens in public, you know, there'll be people like hitting you up like, hey, can I use your, your, your thingy as with permission? Blah, 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 blah. So you can kind of, you know, um, license it out. You can let people use it, whatever it may be. So that's what happens in the UK, I'm pretty sure. Anything you record on your phone, anything that you, you know, record in general content wise, right, it's your copyright. But in the US, for some reason, you have to register your copyright over that work. So when Kyle hit back at Brendan three days later with a counter notification to the DMCA takedowns, he actually caught Brendan off guard. See, the way it works is if you're a copyright holder, sure you can issue a takedown notice like Brendan did, but then if the other party hits back with a counter notification, which basically says I don't agree with this takedown, the copyright holder, which was Thick Boy Productions in this case, then has 10 days to prove to YouTube that they're actually taking legal action. And this is the interesting part, because so many people claim that YouTube's copyright system favours copyright holders, which is true to an extent, but once you get to the takedown stage, if you fight back with a counter notification, mm. you basically force the copyright holder to launch a lawsuit against you. That's what, that's what happened to me, actually. When I did the Chris D'Elia um watch along fucking thing my channel nearly got nuked because i already had two copyright strikes for some other shit i think some music or something and then i got hit with the third one so it was looking very dicey for me but i was able to you know fight back at it because i think i did a count notification on one of the other ones and i reached out directly to the people that were doing crystal special and they were able to take down that previous one but i had a really dicey situation with my little shit as well so you have to be careful with this youtube team you gotta be careful out here and if they don't do it within 10 days, YouTube will release the copyright claim, remove the strikes, and reinstate the channel to its original form. 
So this is where the whole copyright registration comes into it. Brendan couldn't file a lawsuit because he hadn't registered those episodes of The Fighter and the Kid for copyright. He didn't expect Kyle to hit back with the counter notification. He thought he could intimidate Kyle and that would be the end of it. That's why he had to scramble and register those four episodes of The Fighter and the Kid with the United States Copyright Office on February 22nd, and then file the lawsuit against Kyle for copyright infringement on February 28th, exactly 10 days. Yo, big up uh, podcastables. So if I go to watch Kendrick Lamar and record him, I own the right to the song, lol. No, but it's complex, so it's hard, because didn't you, re didn't you realize, or did you not see that recent case with Cameron? I think Cameron got sued by the guy that took the picture of him wearing the, the iconic picture where he's wearing all pink. Where he's got the pink hat on, the pink phone, the pink jacket. The, whoever the photographer was sued Cameron because Cameron used that picture for something. Maybe merch, whatever it may be. And that guy owns that photo, even though it's fucking Cameron in the picture. So I guess when it comes to a performance of Kendrick, maybe in the UK, if you recorded him, on stage you might own the rights to the video recording of his performance but not the song if you understand what i mean the video element of it you might own but not the song itself so it gets a bit dicey so if he if he was to use that footage in a documentary without your permission you could sue it's really crazy to say but it is part of the nonsense that happens i think even i think even fucking bella hadid the supermodel had a similar issue she tried she she used a picture that a paparazzi person took of her walking down the street, right? Bella Hadid. And um, she put it on her Instagram or something. And I think that person who took the picture sued her for it, even though it's fucking her in the picture. So that means that because they owned the copyright of the picture because they took, it's just, it's a nonsense. Whole thing's a nonsense. But in the end, Brendan sh still shouldn't have sued the guy in the first place. I get he hurt your feelings. I get he fucking caused issues in relationship at home. But it, the, at the crux of it, it's your issue for trying to fuck some random girl during a Super Bowl live stream thing that was being filmed on YouTube. You were, you were the dummy there. Number one, don't cheat on your wife. Number two, if you're going to cheat on your wife, don't cheat on that fucking platform. So you're the one that fucked up. Just take the L and keep it moving. You should have never took Unique to court. Like, I know Unique was getting on your nerves. Even though you, when Unique was really, you know, going hard at his main channel, he was posting every other day. That was when T-Fight K wasn't really around. So he was on it, always posting quickly, always having the hottest takes, always with the biggest clickbait titles. I get it. It's getting on your nerves. I understand. But take it on the chin and move on because now what? He's half a million in the hole, maybe. Um, you know, Unique is still out here saying the same shit he was saying before. Like, nothing's really changed. If anything, it's gotten worse. He's quit comedy. He's had to sell cars, downgrade his house. Like, pff, it's been an absolute L after L after L for this guy, man. Is after the initial DMCA takedown. Brendan just made the deadline. But then Kyle started to mess up. He didn't take the lawsuit seriously and he refused to file a defense. You see, he was self representing, he didn't have a lawyer. Luckily, the judge granted him some leeway and allowed him more time to file a defense. Meanwhile, Brendan's lawyers were gutting for a summary judgment in their favor because the defendant wasn't cooperating. Ah. But Kyle didn't step up. He continued to troll the court and made almost no effort to defend himself. So the judge gave him one more chance. Yo, big up the judge, though. I don't know if this is a, a thing about American law, if it's the court system over there, but big up the judge for giving unique every opportunity to defend himself because this could have been ruled in brendan's favor early because it seems like he didn't take the court he didn't take it seriously but he gave him every opportunity look one more chance one more chance like and then in the end you know it kind of worked out for him so big up whoever the judge was if you don't file your paperwork properly and lodge a defense i'm going to go to a summary judgment in favor of brendan schaub and then something magical happened a lawyer appeared and started to help Kyle through a burner email account. Nobody knows who this lawyer is. He's a ghost lawyer. Even Brendan's legal team tried to have his identity revealed, but the judge said no. Oh, who's the ghost lawyer? Was it BGL? Was it Cat? Was it MJ? Special K? Malik? Dan Soda, 
<laughs> Tim Dillon. Who was it? Who was this? Who was this lawyer? Some people are saying it's podcast cringe. Maybe it wasn't podcast cringe. Maybe it was comedy enforcement. Maybe it was joke world. Maybe it was fucking joke world. It was the lawyer. Maybe it was fucking joke world. Who knows? Kyle was still doing his own filing, so there was no reason to force this ghost lawyer's identity out into the open. He would go on to remain anonymous throughout the whole lawsuit. And that's when things changed for Kyle. All of a sudden, he was getting proper legal advice and he had Brendan's legal team on the back foot. See, Kyle started playing ball with the court, submitting his filings correctly, he agreed to all of the discovery, he turned up for deposition. Basically, he was cooperating with the proceedings and Brendan's legal team quickly realised they didn't have a case. I would love to watch or hear that fucking unique deposition. I would love to see it, read it, hear it. I'd love to. I'd love to see it unique in a... In that sort of setting, trying to answer questions legitimately. Be up, Wingus McDingus. Bend and has redefined rock bottom. And we've still not got there yet. I've never seen a man take as many L's as Bopper. What a total loser. The ghost lawyer was chin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a thing. It's like... Honestly, like, I've said this before and I'm always going to stand by it. I don't think it's a bad thing what Joe Rogan did for Brendan. I think if I was Joe Rogan, I would do the same thing Joe Rogan's done for his friends. I personally don't think his friends would do the same thing. I've said it categorically. I think if anybody else in the comedy community had the platform, the power, the influence, the riches that fucking Rogan has, they wouldn't be as, you know, inviting as he is. They wouldn't be as selfless. They wouldn't have basically a charity as a comedy club, right? They wouldn't do it. So I think Brogan doing that for Brendan was great. Giving him opportunity to make a career for himself outside of the UFC. Because again, the theory is that Rogan felt guilty for making Brendan quit the UFC at the time that he did with that live fucking dressing down about, I think you'd be surprised, that sort of thing, right? Um, so he obviously went out of his way to help him. I don't think that was a bad thing. So the interesting thing, like you said about Brendan is that the L is like, it was easy for him to succeed. That's the thing that doesn't make sense. It's easier for Brendan to succeed than fail. All he had to do was show up, be the lovable jock, the lovable doof, the lovable gearhead, the lovable meathead, right? And just ride that gravy train until the fucking end. That's all he had to do. Minimum, minimum. All he had to do was just like, just turn up, make some jokes, be self-deprecating, Laugh at yourself, be a part of the joke, understand the meme that you are, and just roll with it. That's all you had to do. And you would have been fine. You would have been making money hand over fist. You would have had a decent stand up career. Like, just know where you, but for some reason, he didn't. He had delusions of grandeur. He started to fucking think he's way bigger than he is. He couldn't take advice. He couldn't take criticism. Like, it just turned into a complete shit show. And then now look, it didn't need to get to this point. It really didn't need to get to this point. But big up, Wingus. appreciate you. Their plan to intimidate him into settling or getting a summary judgment had failed. That's why in December of 2023, Brendan's legal team were desperately trying to get the matter out of... That's the thing, podcastables. Great point podcast awards just don't think you're better than everyone at everything then lie all the time you know what that doesn't make sense that's a good point you make no it doesn't make sense anybody that i've met myself included when somebody gives you a chance that you don't deserve when you get stuff that doesn't really match your intellect your talent your ability most people myself included you're kind of like you're kind of chuffed you just sharp about it and just keep it, you keep it, you keep on, you keep moving. You know what I mean, you kind of know you don't deserve what you got, but you're like, all right, cool. You just shut up and just understand. Okay, cool. But for some reason, Brendan got the opportunity he got given and it almost made him like, it almost like was a weird validation for himself. Like maybe all this time, even though he's actually redacted, he always thought he was a genius. Maybe that's the thing. So when Rogan gave him the chances on a silver plate, he was like, yeah, it's about time. That's, it's about time. Finally, 
someone recognise how great I am. And it's like, no, brother, you just got lucky and you met one of the most famous guys in the world during your fucking UFC career and he basically helped you to fucking, you know, transition away from that. Like, that's all it was, just pure luck. But he saw it as like, yeah, I always knew I was special. I always knew I was that guy. And it's like, no, no, you don't need, to, like, it's not necessary to have that attitude. Just ride the fucking gravy train, be the lovable jock, be the lovable fucking meathead and just make money with your little hot takes, with your nice little stu Like, it's not that hard. But, you know, we say that, but hey, it, here we are. Court and back into mediation. But the defendant said, no, I don't want to go back to mediation because I refuse to agree to any of your demands. At one point, Brendan's legal team were trying to get Kyle to settle for $1. Jesus but Kyle Christ. said, no, we either go to trial or I want a summary judgment. And his hardball strategy worked. The judge went in favor of Kyle in a summary judgment a few days ago. Now, for those of you wondering what a summary judgment is, it's basically just a judgment without a trial. If a party to a lawsuit files for summary judgment and the judge decides that there isn't enough of a dispute for it to go to trial, then the judge can just make a decision at that point instead of having to take it through to a full trial. And so here are some of the important parts from the judge's decision. Because Mr. Swindell's reaction videos use the copyright works to criticize or comment upon them, rather than to supersede the work's original objects, the first fair use factor weighs in Mr. Swindell's favor. Since Mr. Swindell's videos are unlikely to function as substitutes for the copyrighted videos in their original and potential uh. derivative markets, the fourth fair use factor weighs in Mr. Swindell's favor. And then there's my favorite part. Take a look at how the judge characterized the Fighter and the Kid podcast. The works at issue in this case fall closer to the factual end of the copyright spectrum rather than the creative end. The copyrighted videos, which essentially consist of three men in a recording studio with a few lounge chairs and microphones recording a podcast on current events in popular culture and their personal lives, and which are basically the contemporary analog to television talk show clips, and which include reactions to the copyrighted material of others are more factual than creative. That is such a brutal way to describe podcasts, isn't it? So all these guys out there that are calling themselves creatives, artists, because they sit in front of a microphone like I do and just rant and rave, you've now been told categorically what you do isn't creative. It's leaning more to the side of factual as opposed to being creative. We all do the same things, reacting to clips online, reading articles online. There's absolutely nothing creative about it apart from maybe your delivery. So to go out there and try to sue somebody for copying your... That's like, what the fuck are you on? How seriously and how fucking egomaniacal are you to believe that you are doing something creative? <laughs> it's like, what? Sitting, in, sitting on a couple of lounge chairs you know browsing google is fucking creative god damn bro let's just stop for a moment and appreciate exactly what the judge is saying here because she touches on something that i've actually mentioned in previous videos about the podcast that i cover she's basically saying that the fighter and the kid podcast is not a creative work exactly. it's not a song it's not a music video it's not a movie it's not a tv show therefore it's just a contemporary talk show yeah, exactly. and here's the best part the podcasts include reactions to the copyrighted works of others. Uh -huh. Now, I've said this a couple of times before that podcasts like JRE, YMH, Bad Friends, take your pick, right? They all dedicate a substantial amount of time reacting to other clips themselves on their own podcasts. I mean, there's even a meme for JRE, pull it up, Jamie, because Rogan is always telling his producer to pull up clips so they can react to them. By the way, um, just, you know, as an aside, that might be one of the most ugliest hoodies I've ever seen. That tie-dye hoodie with the, like, come on, man. That is horrendous piece of merch. But the good thing about Rogan, he does charge a decent fee for his merch. Only $50 for the hoodie. So it's pretty decent in terms of pricing, but that design is garbage. So now, finally, we actually have a court decision that basically says, stop being a bunch of hypocrites. There's no difference between what commentary channel... Look how bad Brendan used to look, man. That... The whisk. Thank God for. Thank God he put down the whiskey, and stopped. You know, and obviously the Ozempic is working as well because his face was like mega bloated, didn't it? 
like and just more bloated from like alcohol not even like food he just look all he always look kind of boozy always that kind of whiskey eyed and I, I don't know maybe it's just me but i just i honestly think developing a developing an alcohol addiction in your mid 30s is redacted i don't care especially if you're a content creator if you've been pushed to drink because you work a regular job i understand it right Reckon, reckon a regular job is fucking shit we all have to do it to keep the lights on to pay our rent pay our mortgage put our kids through school whatever it may be it's terrible i understand but i understand it more if you're a regular civilian as opposed to these guys who get to call their own shots make their own timetables you know whatever like the fact that he got pushed to drink that much at that point is really embarrassing but he does look a lot better now, but look at him. Look how he looked there. He's got that extra forehead meat going on there, the blotchiness of his cheeks. He kind of looks like Burt Kreischer. The doing and what you guys are doing on your podcasts. You're not producing creative work. You're just sitting around talking about stuff just like these commentary channels yeah, do. Exactly. Oh. And so here we are. After a two-year battle that ended in disaster for Brendan Schaub, not only has he blown hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees, but he somehow managed to make himself look like even more of a read act than he already did. The funniest part in all of this is that Brendan didn't even know it was a copyright case. This whole time, he thought it was a defamation case, which has separate laws and rules. I don't think that's the case. I think he said defamation to make himself sound better and to make himself sound more like a victim. I think he knew it was a copyright case. He just made it seem like it was a defamation case to give him a justifiable reason for suing Unique. Because I think he knew there's no justifiable reason to sue him under copyright because, you know, it's all fair use. But because he went to appear like the victim and cry, woe is me, he said defamation. And obviously the stuff about, oh, he beats his kids and all this. It's like, come on, bro, whatever. Take a look at his comments on the case over the last two years, and then I'll break them down for you guys straight after. On February 23rd, you text Bobby a video clip some dude put together, a random YouTuber, um, of that same Trash Tuesday episode, mm -hmm. talking about being us being hit on by a comic. Mm -hmm. But with the clickbait title, Bobby Lee's wife confirmed Shab tried cheating on his wife with her. <laughs> it still makes me laugh that, you know, that happened. Legit, that makes me laugh that happened. And most likely, you know what You know what happened most likely? This is my guess. Being a red-blooded male myself. Sometimes, when you're a dude and you hear somebody else mention something about another girl or another woman in a very sexual nature, in a very horny nature, it can sometimes activate your horniness. And you can sometimes think, oh, that could be me. When actually, it's not you. It's just a story. It's just something you've heard. You haven't put in the work. You don't know the person. It's got nothing to do with you. Nothing at all. But for some reason, guys have this thing where it's like, ah, ah. I mean, it, it activates something in you. So I think, my theory is this. I think somebody told Brendan about Kalila's sexual preferences and what she has to get up to. Maybe that she likes to swing. Maybe that she's a bit loose and blah, blah, blah. Something. Somebody told him something and it just got him excited. <laughs> and then he just went full pelt, full court press without realizing that this lady didn't like him at all. That's the thing he doesn't understand. He, she didn't even like him as a person. She probably thought he was a redact. And, or maybe she was offended because that's, that's the thing. Girls, apart from boys, aren't the same. But women get offended when guys they're not into try and hit on them. They take it as like an affront. Like, how dare you? How dare you, of all people, think you have a chance with me? So that's what made it even more funnier. And then, of course, the Annie Leader interview happened. But I just can't believe that he would do this so close to a circle. It's one thing if it's a comedian outside of the group. I think you shouldn't do it anyway. Personally, I think, especially if it's your peers and you're in the same fucking group and you're in the same community, just leave everybody alone. Unless somebody comes onto you, leave them alone. But if you're going to do it, at least do it to somebody that's like loosely associated. Don't do it with people in the core group. Like Bobby's part of the core LA group. Kalila's part of the core LA group at that time. It's too risky. He did it and he got burned in the most epic way possible 
because then he ended up doing it with two women who are both, you know, friends, part of the same little podcast thing. And they, and they took great pleasure in exposing him, in embarrassing him, and generally set the dominoes, you know, falling in terms of his career. And he had to sit there, embarrassed. Like, look at his face, sit there, embarrassed, looking all sheepish and shit, as this woman just sat there, read him to a T, read out his texts, like, oh, I, honestly, like, one of the most craziest own goals I've ever seen in my entire life. You text Bobby saying, you've been harassed for six years straight. And you've had it. And you're finally going, this is, quote, this is a direct quote. Mm -hmm. You're finally going after anyone who harasses you online, including right. comics, that you have spent half a million dollars on monster lawyers, and that you have friends in dark places who are going to get the job done. So this is a funny thing, because Brennan always lies. But he said then he spent half a million dollars. So it could be more now. But I still don't believe he spent half a million because he could have been exaggerated. He might have spent 100000 But he already said he spent money back then. So can you imagine how much he's totaled it, how much in total it's come to? Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. Mm -hmm. To which Bobby says, okay, I'll talk to Kalila. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with like, you know, defamation of character, stuff like that. That's even like the narrative on me, which I don't talk about with... You, know. you don't talk about it because you know you're in the wrong. That's what I'm saying. I believe Brendan knew it was a copyright case, but he didn't want to say it because he wanted to look like a victim. That's why he, he took this whole defamation thing. He knew it was a copyright case. He knew. He knew. But he knew it was also in the wrong. I have a lawsuit against this YouTuber who's a small-time YouTuber. If you don't know the background, you're like, oh, it's this... Small-time YouTuber crushed you, mate. Small time, not that important, irrelevant. Say all the words you want to say, but he still crushed you. That's the that's the embarrassing thing about it. This small time YouTuber gave you another L. Guy who's big in the space, who and the smaller guy. No, no, no. I don't give a f if you want to criticize my fight picks or my stand up, my podcast. That's what I, I'm a public figure. I signed up for that. Fra I also love how he says that. Thank you for your permission. And thank you for telling us exactly the things that we can criticize you for. Criticize me for my fight picks, my comedy. That's the only things you can criticize him for. Nothing else is within the realms of crit Like, come on, man. No one needs your permission to say anything. Really. That's the nature of the internet. And if anything, that should have been his superpower. He should have been the guy that just lets people say whatever the fuck they want and acts like it doesn't bother him. And just keep doing your content, keep doing your comedy, keep touring the country he would have made so much money he would have been fine now to this day even with rogan leaving but but he tried to shut people up tried to intimidate tried to bully now look at you that stuff does not bother me but when you start slandering my name stealing content and creating this false narrative of look at his voices but honestly brendan's an interesting guy he's a f former ufc heavyweight by all accounts, he looks massive in real life. An actual gorilla. And his voice is trembling because of all this shit. Like, sometimes people just get born into bodies, but they don't actually have any kind of like, about them. Do you know what I mean? Maybe he just got born into the body he is, but inside he's a bit sensitive. He's a little bit, you know, it's like, like why, why are you, why is your voice trembling like come on bro like you're an, a legitimate badass you can legitimately kill people with your bare hands you can legitimately kill all of us if you wanted to right you could line up me joke world comedy enforcement mike red bar you could put all of us in a room together and you would kill us <laughs> in a minute <laughs> and he's out here shaking I, I can't believe it cheating on my wife and doing all this crazy shit and the defamatory stuff and using content and the clickbait stuff like that for years years well then you we're not playing the well, same game, game man. Thing, man. then, then i have, have to, to do, do something. something if you made an entire but, career yeah. off defamation i have to do something that's the thing though the whole career that's the thing that's really funny about it he made it wink unique made a whole career out of just pointing out all the dumb shit that brendan says that's it. 
he makes a whole career out of pointing out all the dumb shit that Brendan says. Same thing with the Reddit, same thing with TFAT K and all these other channels. Same thing, like same thing with Two Days to Try. Same thing. So you would think if you were smart, you'd be like, you know what? How could I? How could I drain these guys of content? How could I starve them of content? Oh, I got it. Stop saying dumb shit. He doesn't. He just goes. Several times I've had my team reach out and go, we don't want to pursue this, dude. Just stop. And he wouldn't. I wonder who reached out to him during that time. I wonder who reached out to Unique. Was it BGL? Was it Shrimp? Was it Chin? I wonder who reached out to, to Unique and said, hey, can you stop um, pointing out all the dumb shit Brendan says and does, please? I wonder who's reached out to him. So what would you do? So this narrative that, oh, this this bigger YouTuber is suing this other YouTuber for no reason to silence him. To, you know, I thought you didn't get down with cancel culture. I don't in any facet. If you don't get down with cancel culture, why are you canceling somebody? That's a really good question. Why do you think it's okay to cancel him? This is different. You got you got to know your facts. You gotta... Is it though? Your details. You want to say, oh, he has those the fight picks or he's bad at English or, you know, I didn't like his stand up. I think Louis CK is better. No, it's fine. I love how he compares himself to Louis CK. He said Louis CK is better. What? It's all yeah, good. That's fine. But then when, when you start going down that dark road, man, you start going down, you know, the, the, these, these clip baity things that are defamation of character for years, 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 hundreds of videos for years. When I got my attention, that's where this goes. Louis CK is better. Oh, really? Thanks for letting us know. I just don't talk about it. And the problem when you don't talk about it is people can jump to assumptions, go, oh, this, this bigger guy is trying to silence the little guy because he's critical. No, are you kidding me? I mean, people are critical. I don't give That doesn't bother me. Be critical. Mm. It, does, it does bother you, though. It shouldn't bother you, but it does. It shouldn't bother you, but it does. That's the issue. If he lent into all the shit that bothers him, he'd be a fucking multimillionaire now. He'd still be doing fucking comedy. He'd still be touring the country. Still, maybe even touring the world. But it actually bothered him when people take the piss out of him. It bothers him when people laugh at him. It bothers him when people point out the dumb shit he says. It even bothers him when his own team... We saw it recently with that Sanaz girl, right? The new girl at the back that replaced Kat. She talks back a bit. She has her own point of view. She wants to have a bit of banter. And Brendan actually gives her the fucking, the fucking, you know, he stares at her, he glares at her like, shut the fuck up. Like, you can't even correct him, like, live on air. <laughs> he doesn't respond well to being corrected at all. Fucking hell, man. Like, what kind of person are you, mate? What kind of person are you? I signed up for. But the defamation, now you got my attention. You start doing this evil stuff, I'm going to come for you, man. That's what. And the evil stuff he's pointing at was that they tried to get the... Didn't they try to get the Reddit? That's, that's the thing that really makes this disgusting. Didn't they try to get the Reddit nuked because they alleged that there was some fucking child abuse shit on there? Do you guys remember that? That was part of the whole unique situation. They tried to get the, the Reddit locked down because they said, oh, um, the guys on there were doing some child abuse shit. It's like, bruh, really? Is that, how the, is that the level you're going to stoop to? Is that the level you're going to stoop to because people are pointing out the dumb shit you do and say on a fucking subreddit somewhere when you could just kill it all by just stop doing the dumb shit? Come on, Brendan. What's happening? Yeah, when they mess with your livelihood, that's just... Well, you start messing with smart. my business, my family. Yeah. When they mess with your livelihood, shut up, Chin. Shut up. Trust me. No one messing with his livelihood. No one... That's the thing. Brendan doesn't even have that level of trolls. Have you seen the trolls that Wings of Redemption has? Have you seen the trolls that DSP has? Have you seen the trolls and the detractors that Boogie298 has? Those guys have detractors and trolls that legitimately want to see them out on the street. And they actively go and try to get them cancelled. They try to get deals taken away from them. They call up places. They get their power turned up. In the, like, those guys are mean. The Reddit dudes, what do they do? post clips of the dumping he says on the subreddit 
Or sometimes I'm on a YouTube channel. Come on, man. Stop crying. I'm going to come for you. Yeah, you seem, to, you seem to be good at like just focusing on what you could control and not letting the negativity get to you. I mean, I have to. Otherwise, you know, I'd drive my, you know, my TRX off the PCH. highway. You know, off yeah, the PCH. Flex. Yeah. This is my TRX. I mean, it's, 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 it's a Dodge truck. It's not much of a flex. You know, <laughs> I didn't say like Lamborghini. Or nothing. It's still a truck. I'm a blue collar guy here. Yeah. Blue collar guy who's never had a real job in his entire life, right? Maybe what, two jobs his entire life? Had a dad that's a multi-millionaire, blue collar guy. All right, cool, man. Whatever you say. <laughs> so yeah, I, what else are you can do? Stop, quit? No, nah, nah, that's not me. That's not never gonna happen. But have you done anything to try to like, um, like suppress this or like get on top of it? Like, oh, I just realized he said, "What am I going to do? Quit?" He did quit though, didn't he? That's a funny thing. He says, "What am I going to do? Stop, quit." You did quit. You quit stand up. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm so surprised he quit now. I thought he would come way sooner down the line. I'm actually surprised he quit so soon. I'm not gonna lie. I thought he's going to squeeze that shit more. But I, you know, what I think as well. This is my theory. It, this is my theory. Hear me out here. This is my theory. I don't think Brendan quit because it was costing him too much money to perform at half empty clubs and shit. I think he quit because his ego couldn't take it. I think his ego couldn't take going on the road and going to perform at these clubs and seeing 10 people there. He couldn't handle it. He'd rather not perform. He's that kind of comedian. If no one's there, he doesn't want to perform because he's not in it for the, you know, for the art of it. He's not in it for the love of comedy. He's in it because he wants to make money and he wants to have like, a, what's that thing called? He wants that dopamine hit of having people like scream his name fans want autographs and shit that's what i think happened i think he just got fed up of going to these different places and having no one turn up that's what i think happened just what do you I mean, no, there's nothing you can do i mean can, can you sue people i don't have you tried doing any of that no i mean we got we have, we have a lawsuit with a guy who Lol. made like three thousand videos Lol. again if you're gonna critique stand up or my fight picks or my, whatever my football picks all good that's what the internet's for now if you're gonna go out there in uh defamation like you know whatever brendan hits his kids or beats his wife oh. well, then you got my attention i'm gonna come after you oh yeah that, that game i don't play and the guy's suffering from that so that is whatever but you know the internet's always gonna internet there's nothing you can do to combat that okay that's enough bubba take a seat and listen I'm going to finish off with some comments addressing some of the delusions we just heard from Brendan in those clips. And Brendan, if you're watching, you can have these for free. Here's the thing. This is something that the podcast elite, Hollywood establishment, and celebrities in general don't seem to understand. We don't need your permission to criticize the things you do or the things you say. It's protected by law, not by you. That is one of the foundations of free speech in the United States. So when Brendan says things like, you can criticize my comedy, my fight picks, and my opinions, that's all good. But when it comes to anything personal or anything that hurts my feelings, that's not okay, and I'm going to come after you. The judge even said in her decision that there is a big public benefit from these commentary channels. Now, I don't know this Kyle guy, I don't watch his videos, and if I'm being honest, it's not really my thing. It's my thing for sure. I love Unique. I love him. Seeing him get absolutely trashed online, seeing him slur his words, and then see him wake up and realize, and then get back. Like, I love it, because I can't do it. I wish I could. I'm going to try it in episode number 200. I'm going to actually buy some drinks. We're going to get fucking loose, and we're going to stream. I don't usually drink when I stream, but I'm going to try it on 200, and it's probably going to end in tears. I'm probably going to end up doing an academics and sleeping in my chair. I'm sh I promise you, I'm not, you know, I'm not the greatest drinker in the world and when i'm tipsy it's obvious you can say because i'm fucking slurring my words as well and i'm just being dumb and i'm fucking being giggly and shit but unique is able to sit on that chair and drink his beer you know maybe to dabble some other stuff i love it i love watching him fucking go from being coherent all the way to down all the way to fucking non i fucking love it but let's be crystal clear about this Brendan, we don't need your permission for anything. You will do nothing. You can do nothing. So cop it on the chin like a man and keep moving like a shark. 
<laughs> Even your boy Rogan gave you this advice two years ago. You got to remember too, Rogan's like an older brother to me. You, when- uh, Rogan's an older brother to me. Yeah, right, bro. Just giving somebody that older brother tag because they're rich and because they're famous is so gross. Why isn't Brian Callen an older brother to you? Brian Callen probably did more for Brendan than Rogan did, if you think about it. Because Brian Callen was that first person to be like, hey, there's an option outside of fighting. He kind of showed him it, right? Look, we can do a pod. I mean, like, that was the first person he kind of linked, linked up with that kind of showed him that, hey, you might be able to do this entertainment shit. But because Rogan's famous and because he's got money, hey, he's my fucking daddy or he's my big brother. Like, come on, man. Come on. And do anything, I call Rogan. That's how I, that's how uh, I operate. Right. Yeah, yeah. I ask his advice on this, right? And then, um, you know, he would give me his, his advice. I uh, like I didn't say it. You see how he stumbled? He's like, um, um, I'll see the advice and he give me his advice. So clearly, Rogan wasn't down with this from the beginning. He was like, yo, you need to stop. You need to chill. You need to relax. Like, people are going to say shit. And again, big up Rogan. Rogan says a lot of dumb stuff. He says a lot of dicey stuff. He says a lot of wrong stuff. But the one thing Rogan doesn't do is sue people. He might take down your content through bent pixels and stuff and, you know, take your AdSense, whatever. But he's not going to sue you. He's not going to try and silence your ability to say shit about him. He just won't acknowledge it. Cool. But at least he does that. Brendan, much smaller, less richer, not as famous. Uh, judge, judge, Unique pointed out that I might have been cheating on my wife. It's like, come on, bro. Look what you've done now. Look what you've done now. God damn. And if you would have, if you would have ignored that video, I swear to God, it wouldn't have turned into an issue. It probably wouldn't have. I don't think so anyway. It was just that whole handing a note to the girl thing was just one of the many fucking things that Brendan had done in that week. Whatever. But here comes a lawsuit. Here comes you trying to silence a small creator and then you blow it up and now it becomes a big thing. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Could handle it. When you did tell version, uh, Rogan, your version of events, mm-hmm. I just want to know for my own peace of mind, did he believe it? I don't know. He, he to, to him, it's like, you know, you're never going to beat the internet, man. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice from Rogan, actually. You're never going to beat the internet. And Brennan was like, yes, I will. <laughs> I'm going to show you how great I am. Right. Brennan was like, no, no, no I'm different. I'm going to beat the internet. Oh, yeah. It's good advice. So why don't you take it two years ago instead of embarrassing yourself and your family and wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars only to lose a lawsuit against the guy who was self-representing with a YouTube channel that no one's ever heard of? I mean, at one point, Kyle tried to play the race card during his deposition. This is what you were up against, Papa, and you... St- what, did, what did he say? And then the next question, and then it has the next paragraph here. I'd like to read this paragraph. This is fair. This is unique talking. This is fair use. I talked the majority of the video and this takedown was only done in an attempt to get my channel deleted as a video originally just copyright claimed and now is being taken down along with multiple videos in an attempt to delete a black YouTube creator's channel. Yeah, unique. Black YouTuber support, bruh. Right? Black YouTuber support, bruh. Yes, bang your doors, man. Forget all these Caucasian fucking content creators, these Mexican content creators, these Asians content creators. Black solidarity, my guy. Niggas on YouTube. Niggas in content, man. Bang your doors. Shake your fucking chains, right? Your fucking gate, huh? Spill those pills on the floor. Drink your drink. Black content creators, we stand together against fighting against the white man the white man trying to take us down silence us stop us from saying what we feel in our hearts in our hearts huh black content creators we need to charm our support (laughs) this is a funny defense he put this on here 
in a multiple other to time to delete a black content creator's channel. <laughs> I reacted and talked about a clip like Sam Cedar does to suck the Tucker Carlson. I like that he used the two whitest people you could find to defend his case. Sam Cedar and Tucker Carlson. You couldn't get two more white people than Sam Cedar and Tucker Carlson. I fucking love it. Big up Unique. Still lost. Even after you tried to take it out of court and back into mediation, you lost your lawsuit two years after you filed it and it didn't even go to trial. Who loses a lawsuit after two years through a summary judgment? This is easily the funniest thing you've ever done. Oh man, the sheer delusion from this guy thinking that he was being Mr. Tough Guy, drawing the line in the sand and put- By the way, just as a, a small aside, I don't know if you guys are trained, but getting punched in the throat like that must fucking hurt, innit? Getting punched on the throat like that must fucking hurt. Like somebody missing your chin and then punching you straight on your fucking esophagus as you're lying on the floor, maybe half unconscious anyway. God damn it, man. UFC is fucking brutal. Imagine someone punching you in the throat through full pelt, max power. God. You probably couldn't swallow for the next week. Ever done. Oh, man. The sheer delusion from this guy thinking that he was being Mr. Tough Guy, drawing the line in the sand and putting everybody on notice on the internet, as well as throughout the comedy community, that he was out for blood, that he had $500,000 ready to go with his beast lawyers, ready to take on anyone who was talking smack about him only to lose in the most embarrassing way imaginable to a guy who relied on anonymous emails from a ghost lawyer. Hey. Honestly, someone should make this into a movie. It'd sell 10 times the tickets that the machine did. Hey, it might actually turn a profit. Hey, big up podcast cringe. Absolutely brilliant video. Um, I still like to say this is a fucking end of this whole situation. Here's my theory. This is my theory that I'm going to put out there in the universe. I feel like... Brendan filed that lawsuit, filed that lawsuit against Unique in an attempt to prove to his wife that he wasn't guilty of the cheating thing. That's what I think happened. I feel like Brendan tried to explain to his wife that, hey, I know the video looks bad, but that's part of my business. I was trying to get her on to be on the show. She was going to maybe take over for Cat. She emailed me about some internship thing, whatever. He tried to explain it away. But part of the package, part of the part of the thing to make it believable was that I'm honestly, this guy fucking, he's making something out of nothing. I wouldn't cheat on you ever, babe. I swear, I swear, I swear to sue him. I'm suing that fucking guy for defamation. I'm suing him for defamation. That's what I think happened. Then he went to his lawyers. He tried. He found out how to. He found out what his options were. He realized defamation is a hard thing to really win in court because you know you basically have to prove that you didn't do anything wrong. And I'm sure you know Unique's team could have easily went and reached out to the girl and found out. And then he obviously put in the copyright thing. And then when he went back in front of camera, he made sure to say defamation, 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 defamation. Even though he knew he was suing Unique for copyright. That's what I think happened. I think Brendan tried to save his back, save his marriage, make sure he didn't get divorced. And he lied to his wife and said, hey, I didn't do what this video makes it look like I did. I can prove it. And I'm so confident I didn't do it. I'm going to sue that guy for defamation. That's what I think happened. So in a way, this is going to be weird. So in a way, I kind of get why he did it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, right? Because no one wants their partner to leave them no one even if you're a serial cheater you don't want anyone to leave you especially brendan he's going to be useless by himself do you know what i mean like he needs that support at home he needs it you know i mean he needs it so i don't blame him for like i've got to do something to uh, she's gonna she's gonna leave me i've got to do something and then sue sue him sue him but unfortunately it's been super embarrassing super embarrassing to have someone like unique win against you in court it's like do you know what I mean? Like, I love Unique, my guy, but do you know what I mean? Unique being you in cool is fucking wild. That's a massive L. And he has to take that on the chin. He's out of loads of money. 
reputations in tatters. You know what I mean? But he can explain it to the wife and be like, you know, you know how it is, babe. You know how court cases are. You know how this system is set up. Blah, blah, blah. You can explain it away. You can kind of lie about it. And if your wife is like, you know, a bit simple, not to not to be mean, but she's a bit, she's a bit of a normie. She's probably easy to kind of, you know, lie, manipulate. You know, you know what I mean. Guys know what I mean. That kind of lady, you can, you know, there's not much you need to say to kind of, you know, make her like believe what you're saying. So, so in the end, congratulations to Unique. Congratulations. He's got his channel back. He won the fucking case. And he's still out there putting out fucking numbers, content after content after content. And now it's going to get probably worse because, you know, he's been empowered, empowered. I'm not sure if he got any money from it, to be honest. But if he did, hope he bought himself loads of fucking beer, loads of fucking drugs. And he's having a fucking good time. Big up, unique. Big up, unique. Okay? Big up. But what an absolutely crazy situation all around. I swear to God. What a legitimately crazy situation. Crazy, crazy situation. So, moving on from this one. Let's move on. Be everybody tuning in on the stream. Appreciate you. If you like what you see, you see what you like, make sure you smash the fucking like button down below. Don't be stingy. Don't be tight. Don't be an asshole. Smash, smash the like button down below. Let me know you're enjoying the show. Leave a comment in the fucking stream chat. Leave a comment in down below when the video is done. Engage. Participate. Do something. Do something. All right? Cool. Bless. Appreciate you.